Interested in finding out about some of Gabriella's best beaches? Well, stick around. Let's jump right into our first beach at Orlebar Point. So this is a sandstone beach. There's no sand in this area. Just off the tip of Olabar Point is Entrance Island. You can look across from this area. You can see where the old lighthouse is and some Coast Guard buildings. And then if the skies are clear, you can see right across to the mountains of the mainland. Now the lighthouse was actually came into operation in 1876 and has warned ships from crashing into the island's jagged reefs and shallow waters for decades and decades. In this area too, at times you can see sea lions playing out in the water or even on Entrance Island and you can hear them barking and shouting. This is a windier side of the island, so if it's windy out, this, this side of the island often gets more so of the wind. So just keep that in mind too if you are planning perhaps more of a beach day. This is more of a windy side, but it's a beautiful place to go and to soak in the views and just enjoy the ocean. I have heard that scuba diving is possible in this location. I've never tried it myself. Uh, there are of course currents to be aware of and to be careful. I've also heard that this is one of the few spots on the island where shore fishing, of course with following the, the local regulations, but shore fishing may be possible because it is, the water does get deep quickly in this area. Okay, next up we have Twin Beaches. Twin Beaches is also called Gabriola Sands Provincial Park. It's one of three different provincial parks that are on the island of Gabriola. As you pull into Twin Beaches, you'll notice that the parking lot is on the right. There's a few different areas where you can park. And immediately on your right is a beach that's uh, beautiful white sand. And then also if you were to cross over, so walk across that nice grassy field, then on the other side, there's another lovely beach. And that one's more kind of southwest facing. So in the afternoon, it might be a little more hot, a little more popular over there. The field, there's lots of room here to, to spread out for young ones to play games. There'll be sometimes soccer games or volleyball games here in the summer as well. This is one of the most popular beaches on the island and deservedly so. It's gorgeous, it's super pretty. Okay, next on the list is Malaspina Galleries. Now, this is one of the most picturesque, photographed places on the entire island. Uh, this is not one to skip. If you're debating like, hey, should we go check it out? Check out Malaspina Galleries. It's amazing, it's super pretty, it's very unique. It actually came about from years and years of stormy water crashing on the sandstone, along with uh, different, obviously, temperature changes, getting warm, getting cold, and nature just created this its own land rip curl wave type formation. It's kind of like standing inside of, the, of a wave being barreled as you're surfing. It's a very unique, neat feeling. In the summertime, some will jump off of even the top of Malaspina galleries into the water below. Be careful though, of course, um, as there are rocks in the water below. So be very careful. Check out where you're jumping into, obviously, before you jump. So there are wave-like formations uh, in different areas on Vancouver Island and even in, on Gabriola. But what makes Malaspina so unique is how long it is. It's like 100 meters long. And at its height, it's about four meters inside. So you can easily walk right through the Malaspina Gallery and just enjoy it. On higher tides, sometimes that, that level portion that you would be walking on will actually be covered by water. So a super high tide it actually won't be visible. And it's super interesting. There's uh, photos on the internet if you search Malaspina Gallery's history. Uh, photos from like 100 years ago, even older, of uh, people pulling up in their boats and enjoying the, the galleries even at this time. The galleries were discovered in 1792 by Spanish naval officers. Definitely worth checking out. Now, next on our list is Descanso Bay. Descanso Bay Campground is located right on the bay. So if you're camping, you can enjoy the beach, but even if you're just here for the day, you can certainly go and enjoy the beach and, and have fun there at that spot as well. Descanso Bay Campground is just a short distance from the ferry terminal. So it's super easy and accessible if you're just coming from the ferry or if you're in the village core, it, you don't have to drive too far to get to the bay or to the campground. It's actually a 40 acre oceanfront park. It's family friendly, of course. There's camping here. There's some walking trails around in within the park, but also just across Taylor Bay Road is Cox Community Park, and there's way more walking trails over there. So if you want to get a hold of the campground to perhaps book your own site, the contact information is right here. You can see their phone number and an email address as well to get a hold of them. Now, next on the list is Brickyard Beach. 
Brickyard Beach is unique and it's rich in history. It was once the site um, where brick manufacturers on Gabriola Island during the depression years, they, they manufacture bricks just actually up the road from here, but this is where they put them onto barges and loaded them off of Gabriola Island. Now, lots of the bricks that were perhaps culled or were broken in the, in the process were just thrown to the side and you can still see them here as you walk the beach, many of these fragments from history pass. Now, Brickyard Beach is located on False Narrows. So the Narrows there, that's what separates Gabriola Island from Mudge Island and Vancouver Island. So uh, looking out across the water, you can obviously see Mudge Island and it's a good place to kayak and explore. Uh, there's lots of sailboats that you can see and fishing vessels and yachts parked in the in the bay just in front here. During low tides, the ocean water uh, recedes back enough that it reveals lots of uh, tidal pools in this area. And then these tidal pools are of course full of lots of sea life, crabs, starfish and clams. And you will see people clam digging here. Just make sure that if you were to do so, that you're following local regulations and doing so properly with permit. Next up on the list, we have Drumbeg Provincial Park. So this is number two of three of Gabriola Island's provincial parks. It's a favorite spot for swimming, for diving, for hiking. There's some trails that go around with beautiful views. You can have a nice picnic here. The beach here is a little more sandy, pebbly, but there's also areas where it is sandstone and you can lie out on the, on the stone that's been heated by the sun. This overlooks the scenic Gabriola Passage on the east side of the island. In Drumbeg Provincial Park, there's some protected endangered Gary Oak ecosystems that are being taken care of. And facilities at the day use only park include the grassy fields, um, there are some washrooms, some picnic tables, and then all of the hiking trails as well. Next up, we have Whalebone Beach. Whalebone is really nice, especially on low tides. On high tide, there won't be too much exposed beach and it will be rocky, but on low tide, it stretches out quite extensively and there's a lot of sand to enjoy with the family. So I would definitely recommend checking the tide charts just to see where the tide's at before you head out to Whalebone Beach. Down at the end of Whalebone Road, there's a path that takes you through the trees. It's not too, too long at all maybe a couple hundred meters, and then you're at access right down to the water. It's a favorite spot of many, many families. Another thing that's really interesting about Whalebone Beach and this particular area is it was about 120 acres of land that was developed. And it was developed, a lot of the credit goes to Mayor Frank Ney from the past. He was one of Nanaimo's most colorful personalities, but he really got beyond behind the development of this area. And what makes it so special is that they created this plan that saw nearly most of the lots, nearly every lot, get either water frontage or frontage onto a park. So there's these little pocket community parks in Whalebone and houses will be waterfront or circle around these parks. And it creates just this beautiful vibe. Um, it's just very warm, very welcoming. You can see the park here. Some of them will have benches with views over the ocean. Some of them actually have ocean access too with uh, stairs, aluminum stairs going down to the water. Something pretty special that they did in this, this development. And lastly, we have Sandwell Provincial Park. This is number three of three of Gabriola Island's provincial parks. At this park, you have views over the Strait of Georgia. It's just to the left, if you're looking at the ocean, of Whalebone Beach. They are quite close. Whalebone Beach is perhaps a little more easily accessible, whereas to get to Sandwell, it's a bit of a trail going down. A good 10-15 minutes. And it's, it's relatively steep. So if mobility is a concern, this, this will likely be uh, lower on your list about getting to it. But once you're there, it's beautiful. There's a lot of sand here as well. There's plenty of area to spread out and relax and get your own uh, section of beach. So that's it for the list of all of Gabriola Island's beaches. If I missed any, please comment down below and let me know, but I think I got most of them. There are of course other little nooks and crannies and little hidden beach access points. There is lots to explore on the island. My name's Josh Wood. I'm with the Seize the Day Group and Real Broker, and we specialize in helping families buy and sell in Gabriola and in the central Vancouver Island market. So if you're coming this way, or if you have family or friends that are doing so, please reach out and we'd be happy to help. All of our contact information is on our website at seizethedaygroup.com.